Antarctica. It really is the world's last great frontier. A vast, wild continent, in summer covering 14.2 million square kilometers. To understand the scope of its size, it is much larger than the continental United States, and approximately twice the size of the entire nation continent of Australia. In European terms, it would be 50 times the size of the United Kingdom. And yet, for all that size, there is almost no human presence on the continent of Antarctica. There are 70 bases, mostly scattered around the coastline in the regions belonging to those countries that are part of the Antarctic Treaty, which came into force on June 23, 1961, though a few bases are deep in the interior because the entire continent is covered under hundreds if not thousands of meters of ancient glacial ice, travel anywhere is extremely hazardous, and many explorers and scientists have lost their lives to its cold and its deep crevasses. On the continent of Antarctica, the highest winds in history were recorded. This was in July of 1972 at the Dumont d'Urville station, where sustained winds of 327 kilometers per hour, that's almost 200 miles per hour, were recorded, with gusts up to 230 miles per hour. To understand the speed and power contained in these winds, bear in mind that the National Weather Service of the United States considers sustained winds of 118 kilometers per hour to be hurricane force winds. Also bear in mind that the energy within wind goes up by the square, so winds of 327 kilometers per hour have many times more energy than winds of 118 kilometers per hour. The continent is so wild and harsh that the only life to be found there is at or near the coast. In the waters around Antarctica, cold water wildlife, such as microscopic life like krill and macrofauna such as whales, and everything in between such as penguins flourish. If you go inland though, you aren't going to find much more than microscopic life. Antarctica is a wild and harsh place, and I've wanted to make videos on it for the Naturalist channel for quite some time. Of course, travel to Antarctica is expensive and prohibited for all but scientists except in a few regions. So I turned to the Microsoft Flight Simulator to help provide some insight into what the region looked like. After all, it relates with almost photorealism the entire world, except, as you can see, for the landscape of Antarctica. If you take a look at the graphics in our virtual rendition of our flight off the coast of Antarctica, you can see how pixelated everything looks. I mean, the water looks good, the sky and clouds look good because while the flight simulator draws on current meteorological data to present accurate weather, or at least accurate weather conditions, the weather itself is digitally created, as well as the water. So they're going to look pretty good and feel pretty good from the piloting perspective from anywhere in the world. But the land itself and the ice itself, it looks rough and pixelated. And the reason for this is, is there just is not good satellite data on Antarctica. It has been noted by scientists that the surface of Pluto has been better mapped than what exists underneath Antarctica's ice shelves. And the interior of Antarctica itself can only be really mapped by satellites on polar orbits. Most are not, so Antarctica is not yet thoroughly mapped. The continent really is a huge mystery. But though Antarctica might seem far away and perhaps should also seem far out of mind, its existence drives the current climate of our world and its existence also literally shapes our world. A massive amount of water is stored on Antarctica in the form of glaciers, not just on the continent itself, but on huge ice shelves that surround the landmass and grow each winter and shrink each summer. And the route that I've taken our aircraft in this virtual flight is at a place where the continental landmass actually comes to an end and joins the Ross Ice Shelf. The ice shelves, like the environment of Antarctica, is fragile. Polar environments are always fragile because they're cold, and in cold environments things change slowly. And when they change, the changes last. When I lived in the northern bush, not too far from Denali National Park, there were rules against visitors going off the trails in the park because you didn't have to walk over that subarctic tundra too many times to literally scar a new trail into the tundra. The land is so fragile and things regrow so slowly. It has been noted by scientists that the waters around Antarctica are warming and this affects the basis of much aquatic life 
as krill, tiny organisms that live in the water, reproduce best in cold water environments, and the water is warming, so the population of krill is going down. This will ultimately affect penguin species and whale species, and in the end, fish species. As the Antarctic marine environment forms a crucial part of the marine food chain, and ultimately, deficits in this region will go on to have effects around the entire world. But I chose to fly us right at the place where the ice shelf joins the continent because these ice shelves are in danger. Antarctica's massive nation-sized ice shelves are melting and huge pieces of them are breaking off. Along with the ice sheets to be found on the Antarctic continent, this will ultimately lead to huge increases in the amount of water in the oceans and ice is fresh water, so this will serve to partially desalinate the oceans to lower its overall salt content, and it will cool the oceans globally, and this will have chaotic effects that are simply unpredictable on Earth's weather. Beyond that, the introduction of all this water will lead to sea level rise. In a worst case scenario, if all the Antarctic ice shells melted, the world would experience 200 feet of sea level rise. The coast of every continent on Earth would disappear, entire island chains would disappear, in some cases, entire land masses would disappear. If this seems far-fetched, bear in mind that only a few thousand years ago, all the land stretching between the UK and France and as far north as the Netherlands was an exposed landmass. But as the Pleistocene Ice Age, which was the last Ice Age, came to an end and the Earth entered another interglacial period, the glaciers over much of Canada and Eurasia melted, and all of this additional water flowed into the sea and submerged all of that region between the UK and Europe. This country anthropologists know as Doggerland, and Doggerland is gone. For scientists, the idea that the melting of these ice shells would radically change the face of our Earth, this isn't science fiction, this is reality. At least a reality that will happen if the world keeps going the direction that it's going, and climate change and global warming continue to happen because that is what is driving the the calving of massive glaciers off those ice shells and the melting of the ice shells themselves. We humans, we tend to think of ourselves as the masters of this world. It's in our religions, in our mythologies, and mostly it exists in our hubris. We are not the masters of this earth and not even close. In all of this universe, the span that we can happily exist in is very small, even here on our own planet Earth. We can comfortably exist from about sea level to about a mile above sea level. To understand what that means, think of the Earth as an orange. If the Earth were that size, it would mean that the entire zone that we can actually exist in and survive and thrive would be about as thick as onion paper wrapped around that orange. I tend to think of this tiny zone where we can comfortably live as the living mile. That mile that spans from sea level to a mile up into the troposphere of our atmosphere. If we go much higher than that, life becomes a struggle. Likewise, if we go any lower, we need this living mile. We need our earth steady and stable. And the only reason that it is changing so fast is due to human conditions releasing massive amounts of greenhouse chemicals into the atmosphere and destabilizing our planet. I've taken our virtual plane down low and we're flying over the edge of the ice sheet right now. I don't know if the satellites portrayed this ice right at the edge of the ice sheet as dirty. Perhaps it is. When I lived in the far north, I would often see dirty ice, especially after there had been a windstorm. If there had been some exposed ground someplace where dirt and dust could have been kicked up. Or maybe it's the flight simulator itself not quite understanding how to interpret such an unusual landscape that happens sometimes. But the reason I've flown so low over the edge of the ice shelf is I want you to take a look as we turn into it. See the cracks out there? Now, ice shelves come and go as the seasons change, but these cracks, they get deeper into the ice shelves every year and the ice shelves themselves become less stable. The same unfortunately applies to the ice sheets that are on the continent itself. In fact, in a recent article noted in the Harvard Gazette and published in the journal Scientific Advances, it was noted that the amount of global sea rise that would occur if the ice sheets melted has been seriously underestimated. The article notes that if the West Antarctic ice sheet melted, the bedrock beneath that ice would spring back up because it would not have the enormous weight of the glacial ice sitting on it. And as it rose, it would push more water off the continent 
adding even further to the amount of water reaching the sea, and that would drive up sea levels as much as a meter more than had been anticipated. This means an increase of roughly one-third in all estimates of sea level rise due to the melting of the West Antarctic ice sheet. And while the projections cover a duration of about a thousand years, their effects will be felt much sooner. In fact, their effects will be felt by the end of this century. In the end, that would result all by itself in a sea level rise of about 4.2 meters. A sea level rise which is happening now, and will continue year after year, century after century. And because water will continue to enter the ocean as the bedrock underneath Antarctica rises, as the weight of the old glaciers melts away, the effects of sea level rise could be felt long beyond. To give an even further idea of the magnitude of this prediction, note that a rise in a mere 10 centimeters of sea level would have global impacts and entire regions, entire landscapes would be rendered no longer habitable, except by a few countries well positioned and with the resources to build enormous dikes and dams such as the Netherlands did in the past. So how serious is the risk to Antarctica's ice shelves and ice sheets? Well, 70% of the world's fresh water is locked up in those ice sheets. If it all melted, it would drive global sea levels up by at least 60 meters, and given this new research, perhaps considerably further. And the simple fact is, it is melting. The Earth is warming. The real question is not whether it will happen, but how fast it'll happen, and if perhaps some event might turn it around. At this point, there's nothing known that could turn this around. As to why it's happening, it's almost certainly anthropogenic in nature, which is to say human caused. All those greenhouse gases we have been releasing into that one mere livable mile that we rely upon so much, it's adding up. We've been doing this for a century and a half now since the beginning of the industrial age and it's adding up. It's having consequences upon our world. Antarctica is a majestically wild and beautiful place and in my heart I've always been drawn to polar regions. I loved my time in the far north. I'm certain in many ways I would love it there. The beauty of that stark landscape is hypnotizing to me. But Arctic and Antarctic regions, they are like indicator species. They are fragile and if things go awry, it's best we humans pause and take note and ask ourselves why and set about doing something about it. Thank you for watching. The Naturalist program is committed to the reliable coverage of natural science and environmental issues. If you like our program, please take a moment to subscribe and like. Hot leaves are turning brown, branches bare.